feel like you'd ever want to go back to live with your mom? Not live with her, no. A 12-year-old boy wants to divorce his parents. Will the judge say yes? A rash of late summer storms raises questions about homeowners insurance. Do you have the protection you need? And eye on your health. Tonight, could your diet prevent cancer and maybe save your life? This is the CBS Evening News. Good evening, Dan Rather reporting. A judge in Florida could decide an unprecedented case of family law as early as tonight. The court heard dramatic testimony today from the boy who wants to divorce his birth parents and be adopted by his foster parents. Correspondent Juan Vasquez is covering for us. My next witness will be Gregory Kingsley. The star witness took the stand today. 12-year-old Gregory Kingsley is asking a Florida court to declare his mother, Rachel Kingsley, unfit so he can be adopted by his foster parents, George and Liz Russ. Do you love George Russ? Yes. Do you love Liz Russ? Yes. Do you feel like they're your mom and dad? Yes. Do you love Rachel Kingsley as a mother? No. Gregory met foster father George Russ at a state-run child care facility a year ago. And after moving in with the Russes and their eight children, he decided he wanted to be adopted by the family. His natural father agreed. But his mother, who had lived with him only seven months out of the last eight years, decided she wanted him back. Even though she had placed him in a foster care system, he has come to despise. Do you feel like that you've done anything wrong? No. Are you doing this because you want to hurt your mother? No. Are you doing it? Why are you doing it? I'm doing it for me so I can be happy. Are you doing it because you love the Russes too? Yes. In his hour on the witness stand, Gregory said he did not recognize his mother when he saw her for the first time in years last July. By that time, Gregory had hired his own lawyer, initiating what has become an unprecedented custody battle that some child care experts are already criticizing. And every parent makes mistakes. Uh, and when you reach the point where children are empowered to go and say, I want a new set, uh, that's frightening. I think that we've got, to, we've got to not blame those children who simply are defending themselves in the best way they can and saying, look, I can't be your punching bag anymore. Attorneys for natural mother Rachel Kingsley say that if the judge rules against her, they intend to file an immediate appeal in an effort to stop the adoption process before it becomes final. Juan Vasquez, CBS News, Orlando. As expected, Magic Johnson quit the National AIDS Commission today. The former professional basketball star accused President Bush of, quote, dropping the ball in the war on AIDS. Mr. Bush said through a spokesman that AIDS is a priority and that he regrets Johnson's decision. President Bush insisted again today that he had no role in sending thousands of American missiles to the Ayatollah Khomeini. But a former National Security Council aide is saying that Mr. Bush now, quote, directly knew from day one. Howard Teicher said today that he briefed then Vice President Bush on the operation three times in 1986. In fact, Teicher said, Mr. Bush was so eager to get involved that he asked what he could do to help. President Bush's economic policies came in for more criticism from Governor Bill Clinton today. The governor said Mr. Bush is, and I quote, out of ideas and out of time. The Bush economic record is Clinton's number one target. Tonight, CBS News correspondent Eric Ingberg matches the Clinton words against the Bush record in a Campaign 92 reality check. The economy is the issue that will win it or lose it for Bill Clinton. And as he dwells on the recession, his exuberance for gloom and doom numbers sometimes gets the best of him. This president promised us 15 million new jobs. He is over 14 million short. True. And get this, this administration, which hates the government, has actually presided over a period when there has been a decline in employment in the private sector. Yes, but Clinton doesn't mention it's a decline from the high achieved in March 1990 during the Bush years. And now, for the first time in American history, there are more people going to work in government offices every day than in factories throughout the United States. True, but only if you lump in every cop, meter maid, and bus driver who works for local and state governments, most of which are run by Democrats. A 50% increase 
and the people who get up every day and play by the rules and do their best to raise their children, and they're still living below the poverty line. 18% of the workforce, nearly one in five Americans. Here, Clinton overstates the case. Census figures show 11% of American families live in poverty. Clinton makes it sound twice as bad through statistical chicanery. On the explosive question of passing a treaty to lower trade barriers with Mexico and Canada and risk more U.S. job losses, Clinton has sounded all year like he wants it both ways, want. protectionist and free trader. I don't want to protect anybody who can't compete and win, but I don't want to stand by in the White House and let people who can compete and win get their brains beat out because of unfair practices in other governments, and I won't do it. With unions against the treaty and consumers for, the candidate is in the middle and stalling. I'm reviewing it carefully, and uh, when I have a definitive opinion, I will say so. It's a very long and complex document. It was negotiated over a long period of time, and I think we have to go through it and check it all off. Time out. Clinton has a reputation as a committed policy wonk who soaks up details like a sponge. But on an issue which will likely cost him votes no matter what side he takes, the one-time Rhodes Scholar is a conveniently slow learner. Eric Engberg, CBS News, Washington. As things now stand, Ross Perot's volunteers will be holding a mass meeting in Dallas on Monday, and Perot will be meeting there with top advisors to the Bush and Clinton campaigns. All of this in advance of Perot's latest self-described decision about whether he plans to officially get into the campaign or stay out. With Perot officially out, at least for right now, the Clinton and Bush camps have been going after former Perot supporters. They're also targeting especially young voters. Mark Phillips reports on rocking the youth vote in campaign 92. What has George Bush what, done to help you? It, it, what has George it's more, Bush it's done it's, to help me? Yes. Okay. It's, what is it, what is it, the candidates may not have met each other face to face yet, but their young supporters have. Clinton scares me because that's the standard. I don't like him at all. Does Bush scare you more? No. No. Bush has been in there for four years. And look what he's done. College campuses, once hotbeds of political unrest, then complacent and conservative in the me generation 80s, are hot again. Politics has re-registered, and here at Miami of Ohio University and elsewhere, the politics have changed again. This is how we're going to tell America that our generation is conservative, our generation is Republican. Indeed, the 18 to 24-year-old vote has been solidly Republican since 1980. Four more years! Four more years! But the current polls show a dramatic shift in as much as a 20-point lead for Clinton. Four more months! Four more months! Why has this happened? Even the young Republicans will tell you. A lot of my par uh, friends' parents have lost their jobs. They don't think that Bush has done a good job, or Reagan. Um, so they're, they want to change. So competing voter registration drives are underway, and the Bush-Clinton proxy arguments rage. He can't buy money for money people for programs. He find, well, that's not no, true. He, he signed several laws that have expanded unemployment he, benefits. He did it twice. Not only has the current generation of young voters slipped from the Republican grasp of the past three elections, but many seem to feel that George Bush has made no attempt to woo them, while Bill Clinton has pushed every generational button he can reach. You got a lot more of your life ahead of you than I do. He's that. flattered them, appearing on MTV. He's impressed them, playing his sax on Arsenio, while the rock and rollers are being urged to rock, roll, and register. You think we don't count? Count this. Would a re-entry of Ross Perot into the race change this equation yet again? He's a billionaire who's looking at all the things he's got. He's got everything material now he's going through that got it, got it, need it, and under the need it's the presidency. One more fact about young voters, while their turnout has been dropping in recent elections, those who do register do tend to vote, and they've been registering lately. I have no faith in George Bush. And also, I mean, Mark Phillips, CBS News, Oxford, Ohio. Wall Street registered a big loss today. It is said by some the market was pulled down by a sell-off in health care stocks. Traders concerned that the Clinton health care plan would cut into industry profits. The Dow Industrials lost more than 37 points in heavy trading. Also worrying the market, it is said, more bad news about the economy and President Bush's handling. The same, the government reported used home sales in August, down. Durable goods orders, down. Personal income, down. Consumer spending, down. At least some of the blame goes to Hurricane Andrew. 
Still ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, an update on that tropical storm crawling up the East Coast now. And home insurance. How much do you need? How much should you pay? A Money Crunch report. Storm Danielle is moving up the mid-Atlantic coast tonight, getting stronger and faster. Sustained maximum winds are estimated at 65 miles an hour. Storm warnings, these are not hurricane warnings, storm warnings are up from Virginia to Rhode Island, including New York City and Long Island. Along North Carolina's vulnerable outer banks, waves breaking through dunes wrecked at least three houses on the barrier islands. But no one was hurt there, and life is said to be returning to normal. Many homeowners in Florida and Louisiana will always regret that they weren't properly prepared for Hurricane Andrew last month. Among other things, they didn't have the right disaster insurance or enough of it. Ray Brady has some tips on how to cover yourself in tonight's report on the money crunch, making it in America. Hurricane Andrew blew away more than homes. It wiped out the savings of thousands who didn't have enough home insurance. Your policy probably covers damages from wind, rain, fire, and lightning. But is the insurance right for you? And are you paying too much for it? What you need to insure is what can burn. You don't insure your land. You don't insure your uh, basement uh, and things like that. You just insure the burnable value. On the other hand, most policies don't cover you for flood or earthquake damage. And usually, only 50 to 75% of your policy covers your possessions. Got valuables? You might need to insure them separately. Experts recommend total replacement cost insurance. If you have a loss, it pays you in today's costs, not the price of the item when you bought it. If you bought a, a sofa for $1,000, uh, and had replacement costs, and it, it now was worth $1,200, you'd get the, the $1,200 couch. Check out features that could give you a discount. Smoke alarms will give you a discount. Uh, nearness to a, a fire station or a fire hydrant will give you discounts. You can check insurer's reliability in the AM Best manual in your local library. But how much should you pay in rates? That's easy. Compare charges with the rates in your area for a highly competitive insurer like State Farm Insurance. On a $100,000 policy for a frame house in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, State Farm charges $234 a year. In Naperville, Illinois, $196. Marietta, Georgia, $317. La Jolla, California, $297. If you're paying more than State Farm, you're paying too much. I think if you're paying less than State Farm, you're getting a good deal. One final tip. The same insurance can cost you twice as much depending on whom you're buying it from. So when you're looking for insurance, shop, shop, shop. Ray Brady, CBS News, The Money Crunch. Stay with us now for more CBS News, including our special Eye on Your Health. Tonight, the connection between cancer and the food you eat. 